Yes. Yes, sir. Hmm. So, that uh, we saw the last one, it's an example of courtyard planning. You understand what a courtyard is? Yes, sir. Uh, an open it? space uh, within the house for ventilation and sunlight. Okay, for ventilation. What other activities take place in a courtyard? Not you, Gumpi. Anyone else? What other activities take place Usually in a courtyard? Really relax and sit. Or sitting or Sorry? We can relax. Okay, but when is this courtyard uh, beneficial? Anyone else can tell me? So gatherings. Fine. Gumpi, please uh, stop for a moment. Let's. See if others also have some idea, please. Okay, for gatherings and all that. But when is it beneficial? Can you hold this gathering, say, at 11 o'clock in Natural the morning? Light. Sorry? Natural light. Natural light. Natural light. Light, of course. And what else? How does this help in ventilation? Anyone can suggest? So it gives the connectivity between the interior and the outer, outer uh, like. It's a private space which is indoors, but it also connects you to the outdoors. That is what you mean, I guess? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Fine. Anyone else? Can I hold a gathering in this courtyard, say, at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning? Sir, depends on the season. Yeah, with the Climbing. Yes. Climbing. Like in winters, we can. In winters, uh, yeah. In summers, can I have it at 10 a.m.? No. Why no, sir? With the surface would sir, be but hot. again, it depends on the depends direction. Depends on the material also, sir. Depends on the? Sun. Material also. Direction means. of the sun. And? And? Heman, would you like to give some input here? Heman? Are you there? Yes, sir. Yes. Good to hear, sir. So, can you tell me? Sir, it's at 12 o'clock at 12 o'clock. It's at 10 o'clock. Okay, what's the problem at 10 o'clock? It's at 10 o'clock, sir. Hmm? बताइए क्या दिक्कत है समर टाइम समर टाइम बहुत तेज होगी काफी सो इफ आई विश टू रिड्यूस द सनलाइट हाउ डू आई डू दैट इफ आई विश टू रिड्यूस द यस नॉट अभिषेक यू आर नॉट टेंट कैन यू फुट अप अ टेंट हेमन हाउ डू यू रिड्यूस The amount of sun in the courtyard. How do you reduce? By trees, planting, by planting big trees at the side of the houses. Uh, will the trees go beyond the building? How far? How tall is the tree? Three, four meters, I guess. Three to four meters is not enough. It is not enough. Hmm? Or uh, you cannot put a coconut tree there, right? It's of no use, I guess. Anyone else can tell me how do I reduce the amount of uh, sun within my courtyard? Uh, Naman, if I ask you, Naman Pandey? Sir, by using some sort of shade. Who is this, Naman or Raman? Sir, Raman. Raman, please turn off your mic. Naman will tell me. How would you reduce in the courtyard the amount of sun? Hmm? 
Give me a suggestion. See, you don't have to be correct all the time. You just give me a suggestion. Not just very second close. And then Naman is there. Naman is there. We are trying to answer it. Naman, would you help us out? Man. Can't hear you. Sahil, can you tell us? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Increase walls. Reduce the background noise for us. जनरल So we can build the second so floor. Okay. So we can block the sunlight by developing the wall or the second floor. Some kind of stuff. Sir, so double-sided can... walls. So maybe by corridors, uh, are widening or uh, widening of corridors, maybe. Widening of corridors. Fine. So increase wall size. See for example, बढ़ा देंगे तो हाँ increase the wall height, not size. See for example, let me see if it works. हाँ so for example you have your house like this, okay, and this is your courtyard. Not, not visible. Sir, it's not visible. Not visible. Is it is it or is it not? Just tell me. So is it is. Is it visible? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, I'm no, continuing. Okay. That's a whiteboard. I'm drawing a courtyard there. दिख रहा है ना सबको? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. No, sir. No, sir. Something. तो See, for example, when you are talking about a courtyard, now is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now you see, this is the height of your building all around, and this line I am trying to show is the building in the rear side. I am drawing a section through your courtyard, and this part, which I am drawing with these dotted lines, and that is how you generally represent a courtyard, is the courtyard. Okay, the sun is somewhere here. And these are its sun rays. These are the sun rays coming within your structure. So, as someone was telling us that I can increase the wall height. so now if i go for increasing the wall height here i can probably reduce the input of the sun into my courtyard can i 
Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Of course, when you are talking about a tree here, you are talking about a tree. A tree to what extent? Say at ten o'clock in the morning, to what extent would you be getting this tree? See, this is like three meters. This is like three meters, and how do you expect it to be shading the indoor area? And to what extent? Probably by increasing the height. So courtyards are an important feature, and they play an important role in lot of climatic conditions, like in Rajasthan. the residences in kerala they have this utility of courtyards to a very large extent so we'll be looking into courtyards and all when you talk about yes yes sir is it feasible to make such higher walls higher walls or exactly higher structures around the courtyard higher structures around the courtyard most probably uh -huh. it would be feasible like uh, see there is a size proportion of the courtyard now if you don't want to increase the height of the uh, what do i say the structure around the courtyard always you can think about again i will try to draw here okay now this is your horizontal line and this is your building earlier it was placed this far apart And this is where your sun was. It's visible, right, to all of you? I guess. Okay. Yes, sir. This is yes, the sun sir. In coming in yellow, very harsh sun coming in yellow color. Now, also, what else can I do? Okay, I agree to this guy who said that this is, it is not feasible to increase the wall heights. Who said that? Tell me some thing. Hey man, so how do I? I cannot I'm increase the wall heights. I agree. My bylaws do not permit to go for a two-story structure. You have to go for a single-story structure. How do I reduce the amount of sunlight in the courtyard? Matao. Anyone would like to attempt? Aman Singh. Sir, uh, courtyard ka length kam kar denge. who is asking i am unable to understand who is saying that by reducing the courtyard size mm, sir me ashish please so by reducing the courtyard size probably this building which i have drawn here if i can bring it closer then probably i can cut off the sun to a very large extent at 10 o'clock in the morning right so there are multiple options these design strategies we will be studying in detail uh, towards the end of our lectures on climate and architecture for the time being let's proceed so these buildings which i showed you in this slide i don't have a number here uh, these are rather old buildings which i mean are not regularly constructed if i have to go for a multi story building or a modern building or a contemporary architecture i need to follow then probably i need to go for something like this can anyone tell me which building is this anyone can do any guess so it's in london okay fine so the the gherkin the gherkin That. So because it's a biomimicry of that. <laughs> okay. Anyone else can tell me? Anyone else could give a name? Either the someone has specified the location, someone has given the regular or the you know. The Saint Mary X. Saint Mary X. Thirty Saint Mary X. Okay, and who is architect? Anyone can tell me the architect? It's a Norman Foster. Norman Foster. Sir, Norman Foster. Are you giving sir to me or to the name of the architect? Sir Norman Foster. Yes. Okay. And this building is done on a different scale, and it uh, 
follow some sustainable principles these black lines that you see here these black lines that you see here i hope you are able to see this blue line blue line how i am demarcating yes that the path for the natural ventilation within the building and it is this uh, 30 cent mary an x the gherkin name it is it is also known as the cucumber at times because it looks like a cucumber last time i showed you the cheese grater so in england they give these uh, names to different type of structures if you tell a taxi driver that i want to go to the saint mary an x they might not recognize you tell tell them that you want to go to the gherkin they will definitely be able to help you out there. okay this building can anyone tell me commerce bank commerce bank location bank side bank Germany. Who is the architect? So, which is this building? Can we? Can you repeat? Yes, sir. Please. The Commerce Bank Tower in Frankfurt, Commerce Bank headquarters, actually, in uh, Germany. Architect is Sir Norman Foster. I think it was completed in 1998. Right, and this building also follows quite a few principles of this sustainable sustainability, and it tries to bring in the natural elements indoors without affecting the indoor environment, or with like helping the indoor environment quality. These glass. panes that you can see here okay they are different from the ones above what happens is these panes that you see they are having rooftop gardens they are having gardens in their full height trees are placed like which stand to a height of like 3 or 4 stories this entire floor area is like 5 stories that have been given for you know bringing the ex uh, outdoor climate indoors and in the center of this this building follows something like this a triangle and in between there is a courtyard this part is the courtyard which the architect has tried to bring in it helps in the natural ventilation and these big window panes that you see here this help in bringing natural light all the way indoors for the occupants so the office building this building can anyone tell me if you can tell me which building is this within 5 seconds i will give you 10 points for this class is the gate center who told this kishan sorry kishan what do you know about this building so uh, of course it is written there is gate yes sir ha pad liya pehle hi ha ha tell me what can you tell me about this building? a shopping mall it's a shopping mall along with an office complex it's in which place the hawale ashtay zimbabwe i don't recall the architect's name at present this one is also quite old building i think completed in late 1990s right and this building has tried to bring in natural ventilation this building for, for first of all i would like to clarify that the first two they have mechanical ventilation within them whereas this building doesn't have means for mechanical ventilation there is no hvac system 
it works on natural air movement on stack air flow on thermal chimneys and thereby it tries to bring in you know a comfortable environment in this this building can you yes can you repeat the name of the building east gate building what i will do here is i will write the names in our chat number 1 was Number two is. Can anyone help me out? What is number two? The second one is. Whole India, sir. Whole India. Where is it? Kolkata. Kolkata. Uh, can you tell me what is the specific part about this building? What thing is uh, special from this image? Can you identify and tell me? This stair part. Stair. Stair like structure. Ah? Huh? Sorry. Sliding structure. Sliding like structure. Sliding like structure. No. Uh, anyone? Has anyone seen a sundial? Like Jantar Mantar in Delhi or in Jaipur? Yes, sir. Okay. So this structure resembles a sundial. I think the architect here. Can anyone help me with the architect? Sorry. Well, I don't recall the name of this last building, but what is so special about it is the landscape, which is generally on the horizontal level. It has been brought to the vertical levels. Thereby, you are trying to bring in cold when the air that So if you allow the air to come indoors, you are going to make it rather cooler. If you are trying to bring in the uh, natural light, the daylight from outdoors, it is obviously going to be reduced. This building is in Singapore. This so can you repeat the importance? You are trying to shade the indoors by providing uh, these. Creepers on your building facade. We're trying to go for vertical landscaping. Also, if you try to let in the take into care the natural ventilation, you would of course get cooler air indoors. So, wouldn't yeah. this weaken the walls? No, you have to develop the structure in that way. You have to develop the structure in a different way. Now, okay, people are using it. For example, if you talk about the East Gate building, you can also see there are creepers at some positions. And when I am talking about the East Gate building, these blue highlighted areas, as I said, there are trees in those floors. So you have to develop the structure accordingly, the supports you have to give accordingly. Now Singapore has 
develop this in their bylaws that if you provide these vertical landscaping, you get additional height that you can provide to your structure. If you try to go for this much percentage of your facade, if you go for this vertical landscaping, you get extra additional uh, liberty to gain, gain more height, you get liberty in the floor area that you can provide within the space. Yes? Anything? Naman, where did I miss you out? Sir, last part, sir, last building. Last building again, it's in Singapore and it has got these vertical landscape which has been brought in to the structure. By providing this, sometimes, many a time, the uh, local bylaws, they give you additional benefits. Like you can go for additional floor space, you can go for getting more height to your structure and such type of elements can be added. Sir, in the fourth building, how does a sundial uh, Work. have an importance in the building nowadays? It doesn't have an importance in the building nowadays. Uh, but can you tell me one thing here? Okay. This sliding part that you can see, yes, sir, I can see. Yeah. Okay. Just a moment. What is this? What material is this? Can you tell me? That one. This one. What material is this? Solar panel. Solar panel. Solar panel. Fine. Can you tell me which direction is this facing the solar panels? We can't tell from this photo, obviously. It must, yes. it must be facing the direction of the rising of sun. Which direction is this facing? Anyone can tell me. Anyone would like to attempt? Are you yes. East. East. Okay. What is the significance of this structure which follows the sun dial in our present context? Okay. That was the question I think Gomti asked. Right? And sir, what actually a dial, sun dial means in case of building? See, a sun dial you might have observed uh, let me try to draw. I won't be drawing it here because it would be rather disturbing for you to understand there. Uh, in case of a building, you know, when you're trying to go for a sustainable building, you're trying to provide these solar panels and such, what you're going to do with this is you're going to, hmm, how do I tell you? The sun rises in the east, sets in the west but somewhere it travels by the south especially in our country in india and in the northern hemisphere the sun travels via south this building is south facing majority of the time when the pv panels are going to receive the solar energy directly they can do their work the photovoltaic energy can be produced it can be utilized in the building so that is why this somewhere it has started, it has given this plant towards the south entire. Yes. Okay. Are you with me till now? Hello. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll be looking into these details gradually. I am just trying to give a brief about why our subject is important. Understanding, known, knowing the local climate, knowing the local conditions, knowing the orientation at least can give you huge amount of benefit. When you're designing your structure. 
this is your general design process. You have the preliminary design, you have the schematics, you have the design development, the DD, SD, the CD, construction documents, the construction bidding, construction administration, somewhere you as an architect come up, somewhere the clients come up. If you think about the climate responsive design as a whole, it doesn't mean that you design your building only. You have to think about the materials. If you can think about the services, you can think about the orientation. In all directions, if you try to bring in, as uh, Gomti started our lecture today, you can bring down the embodied energy. Has any of you checked the details about embodied energy about any material? Anyone? If they have not, just say no. It's not a problem. No, sir. Okay. But just go ahead and uh, do a quick check about what this embodied energy is. What is the embodied energy of glass? What is the embodied energy of, say, uh, concrete, wood? You would realize that whether it is advisable to make your building entirely of glass. The Norman Foster designs quite some expressive buildings around the world. But then, is it advisable to make them in glass? And say, for example, this gherkin, can I bring it and place it as it is in India? Would it be sustainable? A glazed building. You might have seen these glazed buildings in most of the modern construction at present. Yes, sir, it will function. It will function. The point is, it is what is it worth it? You need to bring in the local conditions into it, and then probably the school India building uh, tries to do a good balance between a modern architecture with the climate responsive aspect also being brought in. In fact, I am a big fan of this. Uh, Commerce Bank Tower. I really have loved this building since I saw it. But then, is it always necessary to give huge amount of blazing everywhere? These are some questions which I am putting up to you. Answer all of them. Can you tell me when, uh, what does this diagram represent? Sun wind approach over the side. Okay. Anyone else can tell me what else is represented here? Direction and movement of uh, sun and cloud color in the direction and movement of the sun and And what else? Wind, wind. Wind. Okay. See, this diagram, it is, uh, I believe this green building, this green colored building is the building which we have to study. You see the sun path movement has been, you know, implanted on the study project the sun path diagram. We'll be looking into these details, say, probably after a month, about what is this solar path. The wind movement. How do I bring the natural wind into my building, natural ventilation into my building? Probably it may not be worth it, or if it is worth it, how do I do it? So optimal orientation for solar management. Can you tell me what is the solstice? Uh, 
Yeah, the winter solstice is the smallest day. The smallest day and happens around? 22nd December. 22nd or 23rd December. 23rd December. 23rd December. 23rd December. Summer solstice? 21st June. 21st June. June. It is the longest day. Longest day. So we know somewhere. What is the other side of the solstice? We are talking about the longest and the smallest days. What do you call if you have equal day and equal night? Sorry? I couldn't hear you. Hello. The equal equal day and equal night is equinox. Equinox. Yes. Okay. On this side you have the sun path diagram. It shows you how the sun is moving. What is the location at different times of the day? Uh, here probably, okay, this is the south side. This is the northern side. Good. Which latitude are we talking about here? Topic of cancer. Around. Uh, Sorry, cancer, cancer. Cancer, right? Because it is towards the north. Yes. Minus is towards the south. Fine. The longitude doesn't matter. It is somewhere in negative Z, uh, 22, 10 degrees, I think. The time zone, day of the year. Somewhere around March, so probably this is on 21st March near the equinox or solstice. Equinox. Equinox. Yes, a March equinox. March is the equinox time. Okay, so you can also figure out what is the position and in the sky and with the north, what is the angle it is making. We will be looking into this sun path diagram in detail, next, uh, gradually. So what were those double dumbbell shaped? Uh, these eights? Yes, sir. What are these? Any guess? Any idea? See, the sun path is basically when you are talking about the sun movement. The sun moves from the rise in the east, sets in the west, gradually travels from this northern side, okay, towards the southern side. Fine. And it repeats. It goes, I mean, in uh, during the time of equinox, no, I would start from, say, Uh, say it, uh, we are talking about the month of December. December has the shortest day. The sun is towards the northern side. Then the sun gradually moves towards the south. And by the June, by the month of June, it moves towards the south. And then again, it moves towards the north. Yes? Yes. Something you are saying there? No, sir. Because eight is the path that uh, the sun follows during certain uh, during those times of the of the movement. 
that is known as the analemma also you can download a software it's a free software goes by the name climate consultant download this climate consultant and refer it it's a free software and it's available online so when you talk about climate responsive design not only more sustainable from an environmental perspective but it also increases the occupant comfort and the workplace satisfaction see the room now in which i am sitting this is air conditioned and running at around 18 degrees celsius i believe okay the indoor temperature is now 18 degrees celsius whereas the outdoor temperature is at present i believe 24 degrees celsius i don't need an ac in this condition i am feeling rather chilly so my comfort level is not that much i would rather expect that the outdoor environment be brought in the natural air be brought in to my indoors and the design process can take less time because the project is on the right path from the beginning when you are talking about the climate being brought into consideration otherwise it's all in general the same solution for all types of buildings we talk about the positioning of say these are pv panels methods of sustainable design you talk about rainwater harvesting systems the atrium you talk about geothermal energy these are the additional features you can bring in but also you can talk about the shading devices how and what should be their depth we are looking into details of each of these aspects and when you talk about this climate responsive design you can get a very good savings when you talk about your energy so we'll be starting off uh, our regular lecture now first of all is what is climate elements of climate we will look next the tropical climate india is basically in the tropical climate zone and we will be looking into tropical climate zone in a little bit detail and then the site climate how do you study it and what areas do you study what is this macro climate and micro climate so what is climate can anyone tell me what is climate long recorded weather conditions uh please would you repeat again so weather condition It's over a long, long period of time weather conditions yeah weather conditions over a long period of time period of time so what is weather then so normal short so weather is a climate for short period of time is on a daily basis short period of time what is the weather the so climate so condition day, for short uh, period of time atmospheric the daily the changes in the atmospheric conditions over a short period of time how short see when you talk about this news reporters so what maybe 24 hours then over a period of over a period of the day that is what you have is a state over a brief period of time in a specific place today it is hot tomorrow it was cold day before yesterday it was raining but is the climate rainy all the time probably not i am not staying in cherapunji okay so it keeps on varying the weather what you see is just over a brief period of time the news reporter stands in front of you and describes whereas the climate is the integrated weather conditions over several years and that makes the climate uh today uh, last time when i was staying in pune pune received a major rainfall last year which was not seen over the past several decades probably now does that mean that pune faces floods every year no i don't need to do a flood resistant design when i am staying in pune but this year i mean but i need to check out for the other aspects of the weather conditions the climate say for example 
uh, does it become too cold does it become too hot last year the temperature in pune reached somewhere around 45 degrees celsius during the summers but do i need to design for that 45 degrees celsius in summers all the time because before that it hardly ever reached 35 no. celsius so that one was the weather of that particular specific period over that small period of time i was very much disturbed my wife was disturbed that it's too hot but actually it is not so so what factors impact the climate anyone sun sun wind and rain rain atmospheric pressure you understand what is latitude yes sir latitude sir hmm latitude yes which one is this from the equator so the horizontal lines yes the imaginary horizontal lines horizontal lines sir horizontal lines over the earth that is the latitude terrain means the topography you might have hills you might not have hills you might have desert altitude and nearby water bodies and their currents those are the impacts of your climate climate and weather there is a good description climate is what you expect and weather is what you get there is the best way to describe what you expect is probably uh, i am staying i am staying in a how do i say cold region so it must be cold the climate here has been described as cold so it must be cold all through the day that is what you expect but the weather is probably on that specific day it is rather sunny it is bright and it is probably hot on you classification typical ranges of different variables but mostly based on temperature and precipitation what does precipitation include can you tell me rain uh, snowfall humidity humidity not exactly humidity is not part of precipitation humidity comes into picture when you are talking about the temperature at times what else rain snowfall dew any type snowfall. of any type of method by the uh, moisture in your atmosphere starts settling down it precipitates it falls change any significant change in the measures of climate lasting for an extended period of time something we might not be discussing in great detail here climate change but yes it has become a norm now you need to consider the present present weather conditions to understand what is the climate currently in pune the region where i was staying and where my office used to be they used to say that uh, this place didn't even see any harsh sun all through the year the maximum temperature in summers used to be like 30 degrees celsius for the past few years the 30 has become 40 45 it may soon reach somewhere so what are the issues which brought in this climate change in that specific location so major urbanization has caused to omni yes major urbanization and global warming global warming globally it is fine you can blame everything on global warming it's not a blame it's actually so but the point is these local changes changes in the microclimate of the city changes in the macro climate that has brought about these changes pune used to have lot of hills because of those hills you had lot of greenery on top of them the climate used to be 
urbanization deforestation deforestation yes they all brought in these local changes probably the changes that happened all across the world uh may not have had a major effect on pune itself is though if those changes had not taken place in the city itself but since those changes took place the city's entire weather and the climate has started changing over the past few years and probably now if i have to design i have to consider these aspects in my design i can't say that it is a temperate climate the temperature doesn't become too harsh here it does become too harsh nowadays what i'll do is i'll take a short break of 5 minutes and i'll advise you all guys to take it okay we'll meet in 5 minutes then fine yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. okay sir See any doubts?
हेलो सर कैन यू कंटिन्यू यस 
Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, so, what are the different types of climate? Uh, we already figured out that the climate is defined by. I mean, what are the major factors which determine your climate? Basically, the sun and the precipitation. Those are the different ways by which you name your climate. Out of all these factors which we saw here, latitude, terrain, altitude, everything, which one is the major factor which determines your climate? Latitude. Out of all these. Which factor actually affects your climate the most? Or which creates your climate? Sir, globally or lowly? Huh? Sir, globally or locally? Globally, locally, That's which is just a moment. Which globally or locally? What actually creates these climates? The latitude, terrain, altitude, solar radiation, temperature, precipitation. What actually creates your climate? Globally, locally, everywhere. Can you tell me? Depends on the climatic zone where we are. Distance from Climate. equator. The most important factor is the sun. It actually helps in creating your climate. Remove the sun, there will be no air movement accepted. Yes, sir. To a certain extent, it would be rather reduced. The sun is actually the solar heat is what actually creates your climatic zones, everything almost. So types of climate that you have are uh, generally divided tropical, dry, temperate, continental and polar. So tropical is basically towards the center. This is where you have the tropical. Then you have the dry, temperate. Then you have the continental. And finally you have the polar regions. Same below the equator, same towards traveling south from the equator. And we are basically located in which hemisphere? Northern. Northern hemisphere. Most of the public is, I believe, not only in India, across the world, is situated in the northern hemisphere. Southern hemisphere, the largest. One of the largest uh, continent is the Antarctica, and that is also a desert. So tropical climate, there are these uh, certain characteristics. It is basically hot and humid. Average temperature greater than 80 degrees Celsius all the year. And more than 1.5 meters of pre precipitation per year. This is the general characteristics. The dry is basically typically warm or hot, if not humid summers with thunderstorms and mild winters. Tropical, the temperature all around the day is more than 15 to 18 degrees Celsius. You feel warm all through the year. That basically happens mostly across the country, yeah, across our country except say probably the cold or the mountainous regions. Again, mind you, whatever climatic zones I am trying to show you here, these are the broad classifications. The tropical climates, it can be classified further into three or four types. Yes, dry climate, it can also be categorized. We might not look into that. Temperate, continental, they have 
certain different features depending on the location, depending on the altitude, depending on the terrain, depending on various other factors. The temperate climate typically warm and humid with thunderstorms and mild winters. Continental, it is warm to cool summers and very cold winters and the winters experience uh, snowstorms, strong winds and very cold temperatures below even 30 degrees Celsius. The polar regions, temperatures are less than 10 degrees Celsius and extremely cold. Now, these are not specific demarcations. They will merge into one another. There is a sort of continuity if you look closely. But, uh, we are seeing that the tropical climate and the dry climates, right? Just let us focus on this one and this one. Okay, now can you tell me here, I mean, uh, the dry climate, shouldn't it be near the equators? Which is facing the sun? No, sir, because of sun, there is a lot of evaporation and then no, sir. there are more rains also. Then why this dry climate? Rain. Yes. There is evaporation in everything. Sir, the regions near the equator would experience a lot of rain. And why then there is a dry spill somewhere around this region? Why this dry is somewhere around this region? And see here the dry which I'm demarcating here this red one is around this region is there no evaporation here just think on it you can try to answer that in a few minutes why suddenly I mean near the equator you have the tropical climate warm and humid whereas the dry part you are seeing somewhere away from the equator and then you have the polar regions. Sir, the polar regions are, of course, near the poles. Yes? Sir, not, sir these regions do not experience the direct uh, sun rays. I mean, why? 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 Because the earth sir, is not uh, perfectly inclined in north and south. It is a bit tilted towards. Yes? The northeast direction. And there was, and there was also an effect. There was also an effect, I just don't know how it was. What effect? I mean, what are you pointing at? If you don't remember, what are you pointing at? Still. Sir, there was some effect due to the bulging shape of the uh, Earth. I mean, yes, uh, which, which has led to... Yes, which has led to... Which has led to the divisions of these climatic zones and everything. Yes, that is also to a certain extent true. And that is where the part, this part, which I am trying to mark with the red, is somewhat dry. One thing is the bulging part, the other one Gumpi actually pointed out is the tilt. The tilt is not exactly like this. Yes, sir, inclination, inclination of the Earth on its axis, 13 degrees. 13 or 23? 23. Ah, 20 there. Oh. Yes. So, Arctic situations, the Arctic and the Antarctic, there are only two seasons, polar day and polar night. There are situations in which you have the uh, day continues for quite a few months and night continues for quite a few months in the Arctic situations. Mid-latitude, there are basically four seasons. Tropics, there are two seasons. 
one of the worst part about this tropical climate let me point out chennai has any of you stayed in chennai madras no anyone no no one well i have chennai the temperature the say generally is hot hotter hottest the climate that they say the weather conditions are hot hotter and hottest it will be hot humid it's a typical environment where it doesn't change almost all throughout the year except probably uh, say in the month of january february you might feel at ease at around 20 degrees celsius ambient temperature otherwise the ambient temperature is always on the higher side with humidity on the higher side will always be restless there in the given climatic conditions so there are basically two seasons one is rains the other one is summers and that rains are also rather humid wet and dry we are talking about the construction industry and the environmental impact that it creates buildings account for more than 50% of the total fuel burned and commercial buildings account half of that for there is a huge impact i mean what is the most consumed material across the whole world can you tell me oh ah uh, not that close which material is consumed the most across the whole world iron water water is the most consumed material across the whole world which is the second most consumed you material in that natural resource can we thought down material no. okay that is why the second question is which material is consumed the second most across the whole world sunlight huh sunlight oxygen yes i am sir oxygen oxygen now we are talking about oxygen is that the first is oxygen first is oxygen okay basically it is water which is consumed the most and then the next thing is cement construction industry is one of the largest industry across the whole world and cement consumption is one of the highest we know what are the materials that is used in the manufacturing of cement and at certain point we also discuss what is the amount of co2 that is released in the manufacturing of cement construction industry contributes 23% of the air pollution 50% reason for climate change 40% of drinking water pollution and 50% of landfill wastes any material that you are using on your project definitely it will go to the landfills it will definitely become waste after your building has been demolished and to turn it back as a natural resource into the earth takes a huge amount of time so the construction industry does have a huge impact on the environment so where do we dispose the debris after destruction you definitely dispose it up into the landfill or as part of the construction that you are going to do next probably in the foundation work probably as you know addends for your admixtures or aggregates there could be different methods but yes if uh, you cannot have too many options here okay sir okay like uh, say glass glass is used in our construction in a very huge manner at present glass can be recycled it can be used in subsequent construction project there is a how much is the recyclability of that material you need to check So if you have 100 kg of glass after recycling it how much would you get that can be used and what is the recycled content in the material that you are using at present 
say for example you are talking about your aluminium what is the recycled content in it you can check so not every material needs to go to the landfill but yes quite a few of these materials can also be recycled and it can be used on your subsequent construction projects yes anyone so the growing population and rising purchasing power in emerging economies and developing countries means that energy demand in buildings could increase by 50% by around 2050 urbanization is one of the biggest reasons why this energy demand is increasing and hence somewhere around uh, the beginning of this millennia around the year 2000 the question of these green building sustainability came up in a very broad aspect the developed nations actually brought up this topic and somehow they are trying to you know i am not getting a good word here somehow they are trying to dump it on the developing nations especially india china and such places they are trying to dump this norm so that we try to reduce our energy consumption whereas they try to continue with their energy consumption standards so buildings are one of the largest sectors of co2 generation this is the us standards co2 emissions by sector buildings are even larger than your transportation when it comes to the co2 generation industries are the third here so buildings account so for what is mmt metric ton m i am unable to recall here you can go to the reference website and check for yourself okay but uh, i am unable to recall here what this is mmt million metric tons okay yes sir okay, continuing now so buildings account for one third of this greenhouse gas emissions what are these greenhouse gases can you tell me some name other than co2 methane 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 and sulfur dioxide ccl4 ccl4 what does that stand for chloroform 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 ha chlorofluoro carbons yes okay so 40% of the global energy consumption and resources and 25% of the global warm water consumption causes the seasonal variations we have solstices equinox solstices equinox this is on continuing so the earth's rotation around the sun does it make these seasonal variations earth's revolution around the sun the sun's position the elliptical orbit or the tilt of earth's axis what is the reason for these seasonal variations out of these five 
after all. All. Earth revolution, sir. Earth revolution. Does it? Sir, tilt of Earth axis and Earth revolution. Earth revolution. The sun's position. Uh, don't look at this diagram. It may be a bit wrong here. Sun is positioned somewhere like this. Okay. Sun is somewhere. Huh? All the above. All the above. From where is it above starting? Third, fourth, fifth, or sixth point? Okay. All the four mentioned adjacent. All the mentioned. Diagram. What is the yes tilt of Earth's axis? Okay. What is the purpose of this Earth's rotation around the sun? Ah, uh, this is a wrong word. Earth's rotation about its day own axis. Night. Day and night. Day and night. It's rotation about its own axis. Okay. So revolution completes the year. Sun's position. Sun is bit off-centered. Elliptical orbit. The majority of these, I mean, all of them, yes, to some extent, it may contribute. The major thing which actually contributes is the tilt of the Earth's axis. Since the Earth is inclined at around 23.5 degrees about its own vertical axis, that helps in creating our seasons. Just that slight tilt. So. Uh, in India, we have in India and in the northern hemisphere, we have the Christmas. When it is Christmas, it actually snows. Whereas, if you talk about in the southern hemisphere, it is summers. When you talk about the Christmas time, know the geographic coordinate coordinate system the latitudes the latitudes are sir, can you explain once again how does tilt is responsible for seasonal because sir revolution takes place over a year and uh, there are seasons going around the year the seasons are going around the year yes but the um, Well, uh, I'm unable to help you out here. You need to check it out on your own. The tilt, yes, is a major part actually. The revolution is a contributing factor. I am unable to help you out here. You need to check it out and otherwise I'll get back to you probably in the next class. Okay. Okay, sir. But you can also check it out, and if you can help us out, it would be better for me. Yes, all sir. of uh, all this wrong here. These are not. This is the latitude or the longitude. Longitude. Ah. Uh. That's the longitude meridian. Prime meridian. It passes by which place on Earth? Greenwich, London. Yes, London. And these are the latitudes. Greenwich point time GMT. GMT. And where is India in this? Time zone. IST. IST is where? Mirzapur. Not Mirzapur. Ilahabad. Ilahabad. Where in Ilahabad? Ilahabad. Uh, Ilahabad. No, no. What I am asking is, uh, which time zone is it? IST. How many hours ahead or behind the GMT? Five thirty. Five hours. Plus five thirty. Five hours. Minus five thirty. Minus five. Minus or plus? I will plus, minus. Plus, 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 pl
plus and that is plus. the prime meridian. So latitude, those are your north pole, south pole, and the equator. And see here, this is our overall Earth and different places. India is somewhere over the equator and at around 23.5 degrees Celsius is your, which place is it in India? This topic of cancer, which place does it pass? Topic of cancer, which place or which states Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, West Bengal, West Bengal. Okay, in certain of these places. Now mark this location here. Mark this location here. Okay, this part the Tropic of Cancer, this zone, and mark this zone here. Just keep it in your mind. Global factors shaping the climate includes the radiation quality and quantity that is falling on your place. Tilt of Earth's axis, Earth's thermal balance, the trade winds, and the influence of topography. Both them work together hand in hand, but the major influencing factor about all of these is the sun. The sun is the main source and dominating influence on all climates. And the solar spectrum, you might know, is between this range, the UV rays to the infrared. And the spectral energy distribution varies with altitude due to the filtering effect of the atmosphere. And in general, a value of 100 lumens per watt can be used for solar radiation. Lumens is the unit of light. So this is, where is the visible range? Here you have the infrared and here you have the UV. The UV part is probably filtered by the ozone to a larger extent. The visible range is going to give you the visibility. And what is the purpose of this infrared radiations? What is the purpose of these infrared radiations? Anyone? Helps in maintaining temperature of the earth. The heat. Yes, the temperature of the earth. The Terrestrial radiation. Yes. Long What's wave radiation, terrestrial radiation. Terrestrial radiations, it majorly contributes to the heat. You might be better aware of it as compared to me about the light spectrum. Something you also need to know is the solar radiation quantity. The int intensity of the radiation reaching the upper surface of the atmosphere is somewhere around 1395 watt per meter square. That is a term which is given solar constant. And the intensity varies by 2% due to variations in output of the sun and 3.5% due to the changes in So low density of incident rays towards the north and high density towards the southern summer and this inclination actually the, uh, the tilt of the earth actually contributes to the temperature variations the, the climatic zones which get differentiated here also there is a certain difference and at this point also has to do with the bulge with the earth's tilt everything 
as I was talking about the tropic of cancer, the solar radiation. Look at this tropic of cancer. Look at this tropic of Capricorn. The highest amount of solar radiation, solar irradiance is highest in these zones. This is the highest zone. Can you tell me what is located in these zones across the world? Desert. The deserts. Who is deserts? Anyone you can Sir identify? Where? Huh? Sahara. Sir, where? Sir, where? Where? Along this topic of cancer, which deserts are located? Sahara Desert. Sahara Desert, Sahara Desert. Sahara Desert, hot dry deserts. Then, but then look Sahara one more Sahara Desert, Sahara Desert. Look at uh, one more thing here. Why is this part green then? As I am seeing, mostly everywhere you can see it's on the orange side. The solar irradiance is high in these regions. But why is it green in this place? Rainforests. Rainforest and evergreen, evergreen tropical forest. It is beyond the tropics actually. Tropics are in tropics is this region. Somewhere we are exceeding or moving away from the tropics. This is your tropical region. This part is your tropics. And this green bottle, uh, which I am. This part is beyond your tropics, right? Beyond of your Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn part. It is outside. There is a certain reason why this part is in the greener zone. The irradiance is different. Can you tell me? No, there are no rain. Sir, maybe because of some local current. Uh, local air movement or current. As far as I know, there is the Andes mountain range in that region. Local current, yes, that could be a possibility. And these are on the opposite side. And is on the opposite side, and still it is showing warm. Whereas uh, eastern coast of South America is what I'm trying to point out. Green. So it may be because the Andes stop the uh, current as mountain barriers, and they, maybe the moisture gets sheds, you know, yes. at this part of the. Yes, that is the windward and leeward side you're talking about. Yes, sir. Uh, Side and hence the current here, the climate here is different. Something known as Earth's thermal balance. The cosine law it says the it says that the intensity of solar radiation on tilted surface equals the normal intensity times the cos of the angle of incidence. I believe that C should be larger, cos of the angle of incidence. So can you explain again why there was uh, the previous slide, the question which you asked? Yes, there is a certain difference. Uh, as I am checking, the Andes mountain are in this region. This is where we have the complete range of Andes mountain. Okay. And that probably creates a barrier. Who said this uh, barrier thing? Kushar. Yes, sir. 
Aman. Okay. Sir, Aman. Aman. Okay. Now, you can see here that there is this Andes range in this region. It runs parallel to the... This entire region has got the Andes mountain. And some sort of barrier is being created by this Andes mountain and that creates this green zone here. And hence, the climate, even though it is near the Tropic of Capricorn and where you see most of these warmer regions are there, solar irradiance, irradiance is high, here you find that it is rather low along this red coast, which I have marked here. Can you see that, Gumpi? Yes, sir. Understood, sir. Thank you. I totally understand. I am not a geographer, but I am trying to give you an overall idea and try to understand the climatic regions out of these. Whereas towards the north, if you can see, the solar irradiance is rather low in, in this region. Earth's thermal balance, there is something known as the cosine law. You don't have the intensity of solar radiation on a tilted surface equals the normal intensity times the cost of the angle of incidence. Something of this sort is also taken into consideration when we saw that Coal India building in Kolkata. That incline actually helps in gathering more solar radiation and thereby increasing the power output of the PV cells. The total heat absorbed is balanced by a corresponding heat loss and by three processes like long wave radiation, evaporation and convection. So percentage, some part of the heat that is coming from the sun, almost 50% is absorbed by the surface, partially absorbed by the atmosphere and clouds and quite a bit of it is reflected by the atmosphere. And this reflection by the atmosphere would also get stopped due to the generation of which greenhouse gas. Which greenhouse gas can reduce the amount of this reflected solar radiation. Carbon dioxide. CO2. 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 SO2 is not con uh, no, generated to a larger extent. Yes, SO2 may contribute, but basically the biggest faulty thing here is CO2. CO2 and the other side, you can also take out this uh, methane, which actually inhibits this restriction and thereby your earth becomes generally warmer. But again, global warming doesn't mean that uh, your overall temperature is going to rise. Somewhere it is going to rise, somewhere there is going to be a change. It may become lower. A place which was initially receiving the highest rainfall may not receive the highest rainfall at present. The overall climate changes across the whole world. That is what uh, is the major outcome of this excessive generation of CO2 across the whole world. of Earth's axis. Earth rotates and that gives the, 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 the tilt actually leads to this generation of seasons, the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. So the summer south of the equator and the winter north of the equator, the sun shines directly on the southern hemisphere and indirectly on the northern hemisphere. Specifically, when you are talking about December, March, the sun shines equally on the southern and northern hemisphere. Again, due to its tilt and June, it changes. The tilt at an orbital angle of 23 degrees or 66.5 degrees. Maximum radiation received moves between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn, causing major seasonal changes. And therefore, 21st June is the maximum daylight period in 23 degrees north and minimum in 23 degrees south. And this daylight period and overall you are getting these seasonal variations. And 20 Yes. 
21st March and 23rd September equinox as areas along equator are normal to the sun rays. All because of this tilt of Earth's axis. There is something known as the trade winds or the Coriolis force. Because of this Earth's rotation along its own axis, you have these trade winds. And somewhere when you see these gap areas, okay, these are the gap areas wherein you have the intensity of these deserts, you have the intensity of the climatic variations. Again, you have towards the poles. And you have the further variations in climate. To trade wind effects, again, you can relate it with the previous image wherein you have these huge variations. It's the equator here. Wherein you get these dry zones. You can relate these trade winds diagram and the effects of the trade wind and you have these dry zones in these places. You have the far desert, you have the Middle East which are mostly what you call desert areas, warm deserts. And the last thing which actually affects finally is the topography. The local topography the moisture content is strongly influenced your topography. Wind and the weather as a result of sun's differential heating effect on land, forest and water. Water gets heated up in a different way, barren land gets heated in a different way and the forests get heated in a different way. So my, yes. yes? Sorry? Land breeze, sea breeze. Land breeze, sea breeze, yes. You have different type of air movement because of them. We'll be looking into the elements of climate in the next class and tomorrow we have the partial progress of our assignment, right? I hope you are working on it. All of you? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so tomorrow let's see some progress at around 2 o'clock. Uh, one thing you guys just tell me, uh, you guys didn't receive any notification till 9.30 today for the class. No, sir. No, sir. So no, Microsoft Teams no, should get notification. No, you didn't get because I believe that there would be an automatic notification for you for today's class. It didn't go ahead on its own. Okay, so there was a notification for around 10 also. You didn't get any notification at around 10 also? Yes, no, sir. sir. There, wasn't. there wasn't any notification. We need to go to Teams and then switch on to the yeah. video call. You can check your mail yeah. one because I sent a notification at around uh, 9.45. So, mail me not come to the mail. Last time did you receive it? Oh, last sir. time you added it, then it came to me. Okay. Yes, sir. I'm just yes. trying to understand what's going on in the inside. Okay. Okay, let's go. Yes? Gomti? Nothing, sir. Okay, so let's meet next week then. Uh, sorry, tomorrow. Sir, uh, sir for yes. institu uh, regarding institutional buildings, from your perspective, what are the important buildings should we study? See, uh, I cannot advise on that directly. Uh, we, you don't need to study the buildings first of all. Okay, you are talking about this transplant. What all to know about, what all buildings should we know about? Because yesterday I just got a few uh, uh, institutional buildings which were uh, youth culture centers, museums and uh, Ports. So, are those under institutional buildings? Port is not an institution. 
museums maybe to a certain extent exhibition centers and uh, various yes things. certain extent what i am suggesting is uh, identify some of the best architects and the best projects over the past few years okay uh, you know this aga khan awards how many of you are interested in participating in such competitions quiz contests and such all of you it's okay if you are not interested it is not everyone's cup of tea all of you are interested yes sir okay. what i am suggesting is yes, you just sir. refer you know what is pritzker awards yes sir yes sir I, yes sir studied about it yes, studied or uh, learned about them we also have some basic idea about um, aga khan awards so check out these award winners what are their projects out of them not just only institution what are the other type of buildings they have made okay sir i was part of this uh, transfer uh, this uh, argument right ha uh, argument argument quiz contest i participated in 2007 it was basically for students till 2007 i participated i reached a certain level and then i lost touch about it but uh, what kind of asked over there that was not only about institutions it was basically about they will give you a certain hint and out of those hints you have to identify what type of building it is who is the architect or what is the specific property of this building see i show you some image and i ask you who is the architect of this one that is what these quiz contests are all about i will uh, you know about this uh, hagia sophia right Hagia Sophia. It was in news also a few days back. You you have heard about it. Uh, so it has got basically a clear story windows at a certain height in its atrium. And there was a description about that that it looks like the sky is holding the dome. Now which building it is? These are the type of questions they generally ask in this argument quiz contest. Okay, so because this time they gave a specific theme of institution, so I thought they would yeah, be yes. centralized over it. If they will be focusing on institutions this time, and uh, till last time, if I know it right, they used to hold these quiz contests um, in a physical mode. They probably call you all to Delhi. Those who are interested in your groups of two, and you visit the venue, and then you attend the quiz contest. but actually is the benefit of this participation in this quiz contest you have more exposure towards different architects their works their styles and in return you also know about what you can take your inspiration from whom you can call you as your guru in your architecture field that is what will be the output don't uh, bother too much about winning but just try to look into this institution buildings for the time being also as an overall architect like gomti sometimes sends me a few papers a few uh, news reports that she come across and just asks me for some clarification it might not help you directly but it will give you a, you know further overall understanding of your field of expertise like as i said today this commerce bank tower look into it what type of features it has got which other buildings have got this usage this type of thing okay so just try to explore on your own anyone are working on the transference design competition so we have finalized that we would be working on residential buildings it's just that the next step we have to think about the plot area which area to select fine 
just start working on it anyone else also working just register and continue uh, yes sir uh, yes sir sir the contest is around december so but sir, you have to we, can, it. we have ample of time you have to so continue you, for, uh, which yes. which place would you suggest to work upon i have thought of it but uh, find some spare time and send me a whatsapp message we can think on it Okay. okay, sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, there is one Facebook page I am uh, sharing here. Try to look into that. Become a, you know, a member of that community. Ethos. They have uh, good discussion about some topics. Sometimes they have some uh, interaction with field experts. Some professionals. You can study those as. You can uh, you know attend and be a part of that as well. it was and there is a lady known as alakrishnan who is actually hosting these quiz competitions and transference the group which actually hosts it was she is the uh what do i call the owner of the it was group Okay. Share two names at the end. Just try to check those out on Facebook. Fine. Can I take your leave then? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Awesome talk. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Hello, Kush.